Hi everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel and today we are going to be looking at um, ways to make textured polymer clay extrusions. Now um, somebody did say to me when I asked what I, people what they wanted me to do tutorial, tutorials about, um, she said tell us about the scary extruders. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I'm going to do today but I'm also going to just put a little twist on the normal extrusion uh, outcomes so here's my scary extruder it's uh, makings it's it's pretty bog standard model i think it comes with um, 20 discs some of which are here and um oh, i'm using perfect pearls as well in this tutorial um, i'm using one of uh, pandora's uh, cane benders it's a square bender this one they're available from tinypandora.com and they are um, tools for um, making canes. But what I'm going to do with it today is something a little bit off the wall, so I'll show you that later. And um, just any sort of little uh, wooden handled um, ball tool, dotting tool. Um, and then, of course, I've got a variety of, I've got a, yeah, sorry, I've got a um, acrylic block. You can use something flat, anything flat that won't stick to your clay. And I've got a variety of texture sheets. I've got um, a, a kind of a cheap one that I bought from the internet. Um, it might even be for um, icing, that one I'm not sure. This is a Lisa Pavelka um, thing <laughs> that makes like little borders and stuff. This is another Lisa Pavelka texture sheet, but it's called Shanks a lot, and it's for making shanks but we're not doing that today and uh, this is a piece of sort of cardboard stuff that was between two layers of a cd box which was actually thrown out in the rubbish and i tore this bit out because i like the texture we'll get to that in a moment so what are we trying to achieve well we're trying to achieve i've made these in black they don't have to always be in black but we're using that today because it makes things very clear I'll just take my glasses off so i can see um, we're taking extrusions like these that you get from your um, extruder and we're trying to turn them into something more interesting which is textured extrusions like these I hope there's enough light to see this I'm doing it right next to the window but um, there's kind of a rainstorm going on outside we might even hear some thunder later so that'll just make the whole thing more exciting so this is what we're trying to do and I use um, textured extrusions in my work sometimes. Um, this is a, a fairy door, a fairy door, a fairy house that I made. And as you can probably see, I use textured extrusions around the windows and for um, the door frame. So that's quite a fun thing to do with them. And you can use them around. Um, pieces of jewellery and you'll, you'll know what to do with them I'm just showing you how to make them normal extrusions you can use this is a um, jar of Vaseline lip um, treatment and I uh, I covered this with little coils of normal extrusions just like this but what we're doing today is making the textured ones so let's begin um, you need your clay as, as well conditioned as you can possibly get it when you're going to put it in an extruder. That will prevent it from cracking to some extent, although I do find it's it's very rare to get one that's not cracked at all. <laughs> it's just a case of doing it as much as, you know, as, trying as hard as you can really. Um, if, if I have trouble, if, if I think it still looks a tiny bit cracked, I will use my acrylic block and just give it a little roll try and get it as straight as possible to do that mind you and don't press hard just give it a little roll that helps I also think it helps if you keep your extruder down quite low when you're extruding the material if you hang it up in the air so that the stuff's hanging out of it you're asking for it to sort of stretch and crack aren't you um, and I like it to sit for a little while before I use it as well I think it helps because after all you've conditioned it made it really stretchy and gooey and then you've squeezed it out of this little hole which makes it even stretchier and gooier 
so it makes sense to just let it sit for a while before you try and use it okay lecture over with that so <laughs> what do we do well first of all you have to choose a disc and these, these are the discs that I used for these um, extrusions so this is quite a big one I mean look at your project quite often that's what I do I will look at my project and think well how wide do I want the final outcome to be and I will probably choose a disc that's a tiny bit narrower now it would be fun if I was extruding things now wouldn't it and showing you but that making extruder even with um, stuff sprayed on it WD-40 or whatever you, makes the most hideous noise and I I just don't think we want that noise <laughs> in case you've got a dog in the room it'll probably go berserk so I'm not that's why I've already extruded these and also they've had a time to rest okay so we've looked at our project we've decided what size we need and we've extruded some clay so what do we do next well we have to choose which texture we'd like to try now I absolutely love this one which is kind of like looks kind of like shells so I think I'm going to do that and the way I do it is pretty simple because you see yes you could just cut a strip of flattened material out but what I want to do is to create a 3D kind of effect so that when I use this it's got more to it you know and if I put it around the side of um, a pendant or something like that it gives a nice it gives a proper nice little edge um, so that that's my aim really is to create something that's just got more interest sorry I'm getting distracted by myself there so I'll take this and I will lay it on the thing that I'm using to um, hold it it's gonna be something flat and edge I suppose you could actually use perhaps the edge of this or the edge of this thing <gasps> oh gosh <laughs> one of the really useful boxes but don't use the one that you're resting your camera tripod on <laughs> oh my lord uh, so i laid it along this uh, cane bender and i'm prepared to waste the ends of it a little bit by sort of pinching it on so that's what i'm going to do there it's hard to do this to the camera and not to do it to uh, the view that i'm seeing if you know what i mean that's that's what we're looking at I take my texture sheet and I'm going to spritz it with some water just as a release just cover up that bit of clay just as a release so that the clay doesn't get completely stuck to it because I'm going to push quite hard and then I lay this along the edge of the pattern just on it slightly and then I'm just going to push quite firmly and roll in that direction now I don't think I'd do it away from me normally but hey I'm doing this for you okay <laughs> and there you have it you've got a really nice textured finish there and then you just detach it quite gently Oops. and you can cut it to the size you need and hopefully your pattern will be such that you can do it again and add another piece on if you need to. Um, getting conscious that it's becoming quite dark in here, isn't it? <laughs> oh dear, let me see what happens if I turn the light on. Excuse me a moment. That's probably better. Flying by the seat of my pants here, but it's, the weather is just unbelievable. Um, so that's the first one. And then, of course, what I would do, and I'd probably leave it on there to do it, actually. Again, trying not to stretch it around too much, is to take some Perfect Pearls. Now, I quite often, when I work with these, I have um, a mask on because I find these get into my nose and make it sore. But today I'm going to run the risk because I'm only using a very tiny piece. Just put some on your finger run it along there I used the bronze on the other one and I, I thought the bronze looked great I think it probably looks better than this but I'm using gold on this one 
Now you can take more time and actually if you take it off there, you can do the edges better as well. And just do the whole thing. I don't think you need me to do that. I think you just want to see it how it is. So that's the effect that you're getting with that. And um, I think that's going to... I mean, for instance, if you did a journal cover, that would be quite nice if you were tiling it or something to put between tiles or to put around the edge. There's lots of good things you could do with that. So that's one way of doing it. Now, the other way that I'm doing these textures is using this, which, as said, is a Lisa Pavelka product. And... She has a few of these. I don't actually know what they're called, so I'm going to write it in the comments down below if I forgot to find out. And with this, again, we're going to spritz this, but we're also going to spritz the handle of the um, dotting tool. Now, because this is round, it can fit in here. Now, I'm not making for such a three-dimensional thing here. I've made that far too wet. <laughs> I'm not making such a three-dimensional thing here. I'm making um, just a, quite a flat edge. But it's just going to give it a nice finish. So this time I'm laying it in the channel. And what I like about this is, of course, this can be used properly to make some like quite big edges. But sometimes you don't want to make great big deep edges. You just want to make a little, a little pattern. So this is... This is my genius idea that I came up with. Um, you then put that in there and press reasonably firmly. I tend to go a bit berserk sometimes. All the way along. And then if I take this out, it hopefully, look, it lifted that out with it. And you've got the textured, quite a tiny little boot lace of texture there. And again... Let's do let's do um, copper because that works so well. I love copper in this. Now I use when I showed you the gold ones that I used, I just used gold clay because I wasn't making a video. Um, but I tell you what, even if you use gold clay, I would stick a little bit of gold perfect pearl. This is way too wet. A little bit of gold perfect pearls along the top, I just just dusted along you know on the highlights because. Gold clay can be a little bit, well, the gold Fimo anyway, it can sort of not, not be terribly, terribly shiny. Best not to snap a bit off like that. This is so wet. Um, and as you can see, I've made a start with it, but again, I want to do the edges, but this has come out a tiny bit wet. But you can see there, you've got like a little textured boot lace. And that is useful for your very small projects that you want to make. Um, but yeah, let it settle down and dry it a bit before you go putting the um, putting that on. If I show you the one that I made earlier, you can see it's a lot better. So those are ways or is that we can um, texture extrusions. These are the kinds of things to use. I hope that was helpful to you and I hope that people will play with their extruders, play with um, what you can make with them and not find them scary. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up below. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Lots of my um, videos are going to be about other things, cats, I don't know, household hints, product reviews, but there will be more claying. So thank you very much and let's just tip this up.